Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I am Cesar Kurayama. I am the founder of One Second Every Day. Uh, I will tell you all about it. Um, let's see if this works. Sweet. Okay. So um, I'm gonna like sprint through some of the early stuff of like me as a human being, um, but. I'll, I'll just kind of cut to me, like, working in advertising. Um, my background is I was born in Peru. I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, I was a math and science nerd, but I ended up going to art school, and I got obsessed with video. Uh, and, like, as an early, like, since I was in high school, I was doing, like, little super cuts with two VHS decks on top of each other. And I worked in visual effects and animation for a long time, and I thought I wanted to do that because I was making animated shorts in high school, and I thought I want to make animated movies or whatever, but then I realized becoming an animator actually meant that I was making other people's ideas. I was animating other people's things, and I was like, should I want to do my own thing? Um, so uh, at this point in time, uh, I, was always, I always had my like, little side hustles. Um, and then this one side hustle that like, did really well, which was this... Um, this uh, music video that I directed that had, uh, was j like created out of 45,000 photographs that I took. And it was like on Wired, and I got millions of views, and the Vimeo staff picked it, and I was like, okay, like, I think I believe in myself enough to like, do my own thing. So how do I do that? Uh, I didn't know how. Uh, and meanwhile, I was right back at this, which was, I was working 100-hour work weeks all the time. I never had spare time to do my own thing. Um, I would literally, a car service would like, take me home at 2 in the morning. I would sleep till 8 in the morning, and then I'd end up right back at work, uh, you know, a couple hours later. Um, so then um, I saw this TED Talk, um, and in the previous slide, you'll see that on, on the third monitor on the right, I always watch TED Talks. Um, like nonstop while I was working. I was addicted to watching TED Talks. And then this talk uh, called The Power of Time Off, like I watched it and as soon as it finished, I just grabbed a sheet of paper and I like opened up, uh, I clicked on a pen and I said like, how much money do I need to survive in New York City without working? And just started crunching numbers. Um, what he talked about in his talk was that I'll like blast through is just that like in general, somebody's life is made up of the early years of learning for, say, 2025, then you work for like 40 years and then you retire. And then you hope that when you retire, you're going to get to do all those things you've always wanted to do. But like, what if like you don't, like, you don't have the health or whatever to, to get to that point? And I was like, fuck, that's going to be me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so he said, and I'm just going to retire later at like 70. Um, and I'm going to spread out retirement over the years of my working life. And every seven years, I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to close down my like, NYC studio. I'm going to let everybody I work with like, go out and creatively do whatever they want. And during that year, they actually come up with the best ideas that end up leading to their best work coming back because they're not doing it for clients. They're doing it for themselves. And I'm like, what? All right, done. So for two years, I saved half my paycheck. I had half my paycheck from my job going to an account that I didn't touch. And I like literally gave them like a two years heads up. I was like, in two years, I'm quitting. And they're like, cool. Um, and <laughs> and uh, you know, and then leading up to this year off, I was like. You know, this might be the only time in my life that I'll ever actually get to do whatever I want for a year. I don't want to forget it. And ever since I was a kid watching Doogie Howser MD when I was like growing up, every episode of Doogie Howser MD would end with him like telling, uh, like kind of like recapping his day, like, oh, din, 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 and he's like, oh, and then I like did this, and it was like be a life lesson. And I'm like, I want to do a diary. And I tried doing that once since I was a kid, and it never worked out. I would do it two or three days, but my life wasn't very interesting, and I would be like, I have nothing to write, and I would stop. Um, and so I was like, man, this year off might be the best year of my life. I need to actually do a diary this time. But I'm also like, I'm not a writer. I've never been a writer. I'm like, what is something that has actually like connects with me as a human being? I've always been a video guy. I've always been somebody who like connected to images, not to writing. So uh, this is like the last vacation that I took uh, uh, before I quit my job. I went to Ireland. And this, isn't, this, is, like, uh, this is not the photo that I'm gonna, about to refer to, but basically when we got there, um, there was this like sunset on the Cliffs of Moher, and I was there with, uh, with, with, my, with, with one of my best friends, and he's there just like enjoying the sunset, and I'm like there setting up a tripod, because I always went everywhere with like 50 cameras and like tripods, and I couldn't really get a good shot of it, and I was frustrated because I spent 15 minutes trying to get a shot of it, and I realized, I'm an asshole. What am I doing? I could like I could have just enjoyed the sunset like my friend here, just like this. And instead, I'm trying to capture, capture the moment, capture the moment. And I realized I don't want to be that guy. This is pointless. It's all sitting in a hard drive. I never look at anyway. So what is it that I can do in my year off that will actually make a diary meaningful to me going forward? So 
I came up with this idea, one second every day. I'm gonna record, I had a high definition camera in my pocket at all times now. Uh, it, it, it shoots HD video, I can pop it out, record a quick moment, put my phone away, enjoy where I am. Um, and this is also um, how I, I ended up at TED. So what happened was, uh, at the time, face, if you remember when like they asked you to like likes like every every company out there was like like us on Facebook, and then like a year later they were like no you gotta pay if you want people to see that like like the, that post and like at the time Ted every day Ted would post the TED talk of the day on TED.com on on uh, sorry on on their Facebook feed and I would see it and one day they were like hey we're having the first ever TED auditions like anybody can like sign up to like uh, to like audition for TED and I'm like whoa like I've seen every TED talk like I would love to do that. If only I had an idea worth spreading, I don't. Um, and then at that time, I was like two and a half months into one second every day after I quit my job. Um, and like the little browser on my like Chrome was still hanging on that TED auditions thing and I just kept looking at it even though I was like, I don't, I'm not a scientist, I'm not curing cancer. Um, and one day I was recording my second of the day with like, my dad's birthday and I'm like, I took my phone down and I'm like, man, you know, this is having such a positive impact on how I'm living my day to day life that uh, maybe it could have a positive impact on other people. So maybe I should submit to Ted and not regret it for the rest of my life that I didn't try. So I did. Um, and this is me uh, auditioning for Ted. 17 people out of 1,000 people were chosen to speak at this event in New York City. Um, some people flew from like Germany and Israel and I took the subway over because I live here. And uh, we ha it was great. And I was like, oh, I have my profile photo for the rest of my life with a little Ted sign behind. Um, and then two weeks later, they, 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 they called and they said, do you want to talk at the main conference? I'm like, oh shit, this is real now. Um, it was the most nervous I've ever been. I threw up twice before I went up there. Uh, I lost a lot of weight. It was like, oof, super cleansing the entire, I was the 63rd out of 65 speakers. So I didn't really eat or have a good time the entire week. I was just in my hotel room, like, like shaking. Um, and uh, if you watch the TED Talk, um, it's, it's uh, so I'll, I'll show a little bit of the video that I premiered the TED Talk, which is essentially uh, the first year. Uh, this is like the, so like that, that was my like 30th birthday that first second. Um, this is super loud, so I'm going to like probably skip uh, a lot of it. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, one of the things that I usually do when I give these talks is I talk a lot about uh, why one second every day and why I do it. Um, there's so much that I could say about it. That's usually what I talk about. The, re the research being done about, about how you know, this affects people's memories. There's like, I've been doing this for over seven and a half years. I've not forgotten about the day of my life in over seven and a half years. So the whole memory trigger thing has, is actually working and there's actually excellent research being done um, at MIT and, and in Europe on what are use, what's happening to the memories of our users because they're literally never forgetting a day of their life uh, since they started. Um, so, yeah, like I said, usually I talk a lot about uh, the whys and the why one second, like why not a photo? And I'm like, oh, I can tell you, I can talk hours about that stuff, but uh, I'm gonna talk about the business of one second every day. Uh, I'll skip here to towards the end of the, you know, one of the most powerful parts of that first year is that uh, one of the things that I talk a lot about sometimes when, when I give these talks is, um, that, you know, one second every day is, is, is not this like, ah, here's all the best moments of my life. It's like, here's just like the best, the bad, and the in-between, the mundane. And um, there's a lot that I can go on and on about, about why recording the bad moments in our lives are just as meaningful as recording the good ones and just as important. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm here to talk about the business side uh, of one second every day. So after I gave the TED Talk, um, the number one thing people said was, I wanna do this, I'm gonna start mine. Like, how do I do this? And I'm like, well, I did it in like Final Cut Pro. Do you have that? Uh, and nobody had that. <laughs> um, this is like iPhone 3GS, 4, iPhone, most of that first year of One Second Every Day was recorded on my iPhone 4, iPhone 4S. Um, with like exception of like three uh, or four moments that were recorded on a better camera, because uh, I had one with me. Uh, but basically I started thinking like, man, if this was an app, what would it actually look like? What could I, you know, what, how, what do I wish existed that would make this entire process easy? Because for me, it was like, I still had to sit down and edit video. Um, so I was like, well, I just wanted to like, automatically sort my photos and videos by the date in which they were captured. Um, and then I want to just click on the video that I recorded and just scrub over to the moment and select it and then eventually compile them. Like that's kind of what I had in mind and this is what I took over to try to find developers. Uh, that sucked. I literally started after that TED talk by Googling how do I make an app. I had no idea. I was like, I, like, I, I went to art school. I have no idea. Um, and uh, luckily, you know, I bought a lot of coffees for a lot of friends and 
went to a lot of meetup.com developer things where I was like, I don't know, I don't know any code, who are you? Um, and they, uh, you know, luckily I just kept chatting with people, kept, met people like Frank. Um, <laughs> And uh, luckily, uh, over time, um, you know, I just kind of understood more, learned, blo like, learned a lot by reading a lot of blog posts, reading books, um, some books that I liked, some books that I hated. Um, and eventually, like, I mean, I was, I was pretty uh, down because I didn't think I was going to be able to make this. More and more, I like, looked into it. I, was, looked, like, I needed like $100,000 to pull this off. I don't have $100,000. So if anything, I literally dead broke <laughs> uh, because I, I spent my savings taking a year off. Um, so um, eventually, luckily, I found these guys uh, after like meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings uh, with developers who were all like hundred thousand dollars minimum, and like they could care less about what they were building. They just wanted to get paid. Um, and then I found these guys who were like, "Man, like this is such a cool thing. Like we want to be the guys who made it. Um, we can. We want to lowball you as little as possible because we want to be the guys who made this. Uh, like, and they, they they gave me like a quote of like twenty five thousand dollars. And I was like, "Yes, let's do it. Let's shake hands." And then I'm like, "Okay, by the way, I don't have twenty five thousand um, dollars." So all right. So then what? You know. Um, well. I'll get to that. Um, eventually, the app looked like this, thanks to their help and their, um, you know, their their team. Um, this is a development shop in Brooklyn called Alchemy Fifty. Uh, they've been acquired since then, uh, but they really got the ball rolling. Um, and they initially were like three months, and then it ended up being like eight months. And then I was like, I don't have money to pay rent. Um, and so eventually, like this is actually what the app. Well, actually, the app doesn't look like this anymore. We've updated it since then, but this is what it looked like about a year ago. Um, and so this is one of the seconds of the day from that TED talk. Um, can I have water? Basically, I went to see Tim Ferriss speak about the four-hour body. <laughs> and uh, oh, thank you. Perfect. All right. So um, I had read uh, the four-hour work week when, during my year off. And so I was like, hey, Tim Ferriss, smart guy, I guess. Um, and he, um, he was releasing his new book, The 4-Hour Body. And I was like, I should go to see him speak. And I want to build this app, but I don't know like, how to do it. So I waited until like, everybody like, like, finished like, swarming him after his talk. And then he was like, I got to go to dinner. And I'm like, no, not before I talk to you first. And I said, hey, man, like, I am... Um, I have this, like, I gave, just gave this, like, TED Talk thing. I want to build this app, but I have no idea how to fund it. Like, I have no idea. I had zero, no, like, the word VC was so alien to me. Um, and uh, I was still trying to figure things out, and it basically said, like, don't, don't raise money. Don't do it. Don't give anybody equity to just build your minimum viable product, which I learned what MVP was after I Googled it. Um, and, like, that stuck with me. And because of that, it, it just kind of, like, the more and more I learned about like how, what I would have to do in order to raise the money to build what I wanted to build, the more it just seemed like to not to make sense for what I wanted to build because a lot of what I wanted to build was not necessarily like uh, this like ever growing forever company thing, um, which seemed like VC funding kind of uh, needed to be uh, you needed to be that to get VC funding. So. Uh, we went through Kickstarter. Um, we launched on Kickstarter. Uh, my developers were nice enough to say, "Hey, we trust you enough to to like raise the money, uh, and so we're going to work on it, even though you haven't started the Kickstarter yet." And I said, "Great," because I was hoping that we wouldn't launch the Kickstarter until we had a working prototype of the app for me to show in the Kickstarter. And they were like, ah, "Fine," um, but luckily it panned out uh, because I think that showing a working product in the uh, Kickstarter really helped us, especially at that moment in time where there were still there were uh, like Kickstarter projects that like weren't actually panning out, were starting to like hit the the waves, and and so uh, it, it, we really lucked out, and we till this day we're the most uh, we have the most backers ever for an app on Kickstarter, which is a really impressive cool thing to say. The problem is that, like, because I'm such a terrible business guy at that time, I'm like, I just want people to have the app. So, like, one dollar gives you the app. And so, like, we had 11,000 backers say, well, like, 8,000 people gave us a dollar. Um, about 3,000 people gave us five dollars if they have their name in the credits forever, which they do. Um, and so, uh, because the, this is back when, like, if you launched a really pretty good Kickstarter, uh, you could get on all the blogs. Today, it's like, yeah, deliver it first and maybe we'll write about it uh, because a lot of people don't deliver on their Kickstarters. Um, but this, like, really, you know, took things off and it was great. And, uh, you know, uh, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. A um, uh, couple, of, couple of roadblocks uh, that might or might not be interesting. I was completely out of money. I had no money because I, you know, spent it all. Um, and uh, Apple 
was this, uh, I, when I had my iPad, iPod in 2005, when the iPod video came out, I started watching Lost, like, like, in the, like, in the bathroom, like, I'm just like, oh my god, I just couldn't stop watching Lost, and I'm like, I should invest in this, and the first, when I got my first job out of college, I put a thousand dollars in my first paycheck, where I had, like, more money than, I, like, for the first time, I had extra money, I put that thousand dollars on Apple, and that, I basically sold all that stock off ten years later to, like, get me to the point where, like, the app could launch, um, and also I flew to Apple, the photos, because I flew to Apple, because I begged them, I've promised 11,000 people that I'm going to give them this app one second every day, can I, get pro can I get promo codes? And they were like, no, we don't do that, we can't do that. But like, you do it for Starbucks, like I go to Starbucks and I can like scratch off a thing, they're like, well, yeah, you're not Starbucks, I'm like, fine. So a lot of red tape, they wouldn't let me do it, so I had to make the app free for 24 hours and beg all our packers to download it during that, pa like, that span of time, uh, which meant we ended up next to Instagram the day we launched, it was like January 2013, which was only two weeks after our Kickstarter ended, uh, which is like unheard of for Kickstarter. Like two weeks after the Kickstarter was over, we were able to launch, mostly out of peer pressure from 11,000 people who were like, it's the new year, I want to do one second every day during 2013. I'm like, you can't, just record videos and you use the app later. But it didn't matter. We were just under so much pressure that we were like, let's release it. Um, we went from 50 beta testers, because Apple had like, limps, like very strict limits on the beta testers at the time, the amount of beta testers, to 50,000 users like in 24 hours and the app was completely broken and it was horrible. <laughs> so it was just months and months of misery answering, you know, uh, like, like, you know, uh, Zendesk uh, emails to people telling them I'm really sorry about the app being broken. We never tested it under your particular phone, under your particular iOS and your particular all the things. Anyways. Um, because we went over on the Kickstarter, uh, we launched it on Android. Um, we, we, I promised so many people that were like, look, I'm giving you money, but like, uh, like I'm an Android guy, and so like, I'm just kind of hoping that like, you build it on Android. I'm like, oh, maybe, I mean, let, let me like, finish the Android, the iOS version. Anyways, long story short, I promised a lot of people that I would build an Android version, so I said, well, if we go over on our Kickstarter goal, the extra money will be used for, for Android, so we did. Um, and then the dark times. So it was um, always bugs. I thought I could build an app that I could put on the app store and generate a passive income, like finish it, and then go on with my life and do all sorts of other creative things that I had in mind and I had all sorts of ideas or whatever. But I, sl I learned the hard way that like you never finish technology. It's like always, uh, there's always something to do. Um, and yeah, like we weren't generating enough revenue for me to like have the devs working on it, you know, a, a considerable amount of the time. Um, I had not raised any money. I was trying to like maybe do accelerators. YC, like overall, YC rejected me five times. The fifth time, they I got the interview. Uh, it went well, but not really. Um, and. Yeah, and so like this was like a a really tough time where I wasn't sure uh, if if the the, com the company was gonna be able to like uh, make it through, uh, but. Uh, think you know, good th like as we were trudging, trudging along, good things were happening. Uh, 2014 hit, um, and not only did the New York Times kind of write a little story about us, uh, well, along with like a bunch of other apps. Eh, thank you. Uh, but the other thing is, it had of it had officially it had officially been a year since we launched the app, and as it turns out. That's when people wanted to actually share their videos, like a year later, just like mine, because I was like waited a year until my birthday to share out a one second every day video. And so all of a sudden, we had all these people who were original Kickstarter backers or who found the app at some point um, uh, share one second every day videos on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the things. Um, and all of a sudden, well, not Instagram, they didn't do video back then. Uh, but uh, all of a sudden, we're like on the top of the charts since uh, like New Year's 2014. And it's like, hey, like pretty good. We're number four on photo video. We're number 42 on the app store on the paid side. Um, and then, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, a couple of months later, we were in this movie called Chef. I don't know if you, any of you guys have seen the movie Chef. It's one of my favorite movies for obvious reasons. But, uh, you know, John, John Favreau, um, the, the sh super short version of the story is that I'm a super comic book nerd. I was an internet marvel when I was in college. I tweeted at John Favreau after I saw Iron Man 3 and I said, John, thank you for having the integrity to like still be in the movie even though you're not directing it. And I did that at six in the morning, like half drunk, and I just like put my phone fell, and I didn't think about it until I was on the set of Chef, 
And this uh, guy that I met on Chef who shoots all the Marvel movie documentaries, he's like, hey, man, like, you know how he found out about your rap, right? And I was like, I have no idea. And he goes, I guess you tweeted something nice at him. I was like, oh, my God, that night when I was like, oh. Anyways, uh, John apparently clicked on my profile after he read the tweet. He was like, oh, nice guy. And then clicked, uh, saw that I gave a TED Talk. TED Talk about what? Saw the TED Talk. He's like, oh, that's cool. Uh, is there an app? And he's like, oh, he, this guy made an app for it. And he started using it, and he loved it. And he's uh, emailed, oh, his assistant emailed me and said, hey, uh, John wants to write the, mo- the app into the movie. Is that cool? And I'm like, yes. Yes, it's cool. <laughs> um, so I was on set for a couple of days. It was amazing. Um, it's a big spoiler in the movie, so I usually don't uh, talk about it too much. Uh, and I talked to John and some of the producers about that, even in this on set, about, like, you really can't tell people because, like, it's kind of like a big part of the movie. It's like, I know, but, you know, it's like, could be a big deal for my app. Um, <laughs> Uh, so 2014 hits, and 2014, it's like most people see this movie um, and they just assume the app's made up. It's like like they must have made this up app, uh, like because the movie like is with like Twitter and Vine and rest in peace Vine. But like you know, uh, one second every day, uh, no one had heard of it. Most people hadn't heard of it, but uh, it was a thing. Um, and so uh, yeah, Johnny premiere, um, and I don't know if that worked. So this is like the first two years, essentially. Like, you know, enough revenue for me to like l- live and pay deaf costs like here and there. Like, here's another five grand. What can we do with it? Can we fix this, this, and this? Um, and I knew that like, you know, something had to change. Um, uh, and the, 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 the big thing that happened was I realized I can't do this by myself. I'm drowning. I'm like, I am good at these things. I hate all these other things. And I'm like, who loves all those other things? And I thought about my friend Seanick, who was the guy who was looking at the sunset when I was busy setting up a tripod, who uh, uh, you know, was one of my best friends. We've known him for 15 years. We went on a road trip for 95 days during my year off, and we did not kill each other. So I felt like we could probably run a business together. And I said, hey, man, like, what would it take for you to quit your job at Viacom and Nickelodeon and like, join me full time? And he's like, uh can I be co-founder? And I'm like, "Uh, okay. Um, So he loves the completely other side of the brain. Like he likes to make charts and show me graphs. I'm like, ah. And I like to like be like, wouldn't it be cool if the app did this? And like, and he's like, ah. And like, he likes to like actually like run the company. Um, So like he comes in and it's like, how do I afford it? Like I was basically asking like, what would it take for me for what I had just done is essentially been like, what if I charge like $2 for the app instead of one? Maybe that's like a smart idea. And oh yeah, the downloads didn't go down. People started like we doubled revenue. I was like, what if I charge three? And then boom, I was like, hey, we have money. Um, and so I should have done that two years ago, but I felt bad because the app was buggy, and I'm like, I can't charge more than a dollar. It's buggy. Um, but so that also led to uh, me, me and him sitting around, and he came up with all these ideas for how to generate more revenue so we could afford hiring a full-time developer, a CTO. And Sammy, uh, well, and, uh, and basically I was like, he, he had all these ideas about how to put ads in the app or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's what, this would, I can't. This would kill me. Like, how about we charge $5 for the app? And he's like, okay. And then, boom, we could hire a CTO. And all of a sudden, like, we have, like, a real business going. Um, and so all of a sudden we're we're fixing things quickly and like things are amazing and, and like uh, uh, and, and, and you know boom 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 uh, I'll skip her around uh, uh, so New Year's 2016 we hit number two in photo video and we hit number 17 in the in the in the uh, all time uh, oh, in the uh, overall top charts and it's like hey and then like a year later it's like we're number one and we hit like top ten for a minute and then we hit number se- nine seven eight and we got all the way to number three and I didn't get a screenshot I hate myself um, and so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like all of a sudden we're, um, you know, I got excited at 10. We got in the top 10. Um, and then, yeah, so that's cool. Um, and then, uh, and again, this is all happening for the same exact reason that people are sharing out their videos a year since they started. Like they want to like, hey, here's my entire year in six minutes. And it's like, yeah. And then people are like, I want to do that too. So this year we hit number one. Um, not only did we hit number one, we were like number one for a week straight. Um, and... Uh, we kind of have built a pretty good home in the top 10 apps, uh, uh, t- paid apps on the App Store. Um, and <laughs> um, and uh, the team's grown. Uh, well, the t- the, this is, you know, as a team, as we were making more money because we weren't as buggy and reviews are better, and we could as actually had customer service, emails being answered, um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we were able to continue to hire. Um, 
Uh, and then February 1st of this year hit, and we were number one again. And we were like, huh. And we know why, because we had been kind of seeing this uptick happening, which is uh, people are uh, sharing their months now. Instead of waiting a full year to share, they're sharing out on, um, now that Instagram and stuff like that allow for longer videos than like 30 seconds, you have a lot of people sharing out their 30 seconds reviews of their month. So every time somebody shares out their video, boom, we hit number one. Um, and so this has been happening pretty much uh, every first of the month. Like first of the month, we're like, we're gonna, are we going to hit number one? Like, you know, since it's hit number two or three, but it's still pretty good. Um, so this is our revenue. Like we went from like, ah, uh, to like, hey, money. And so like as, it's, as, the, as the money has been continued to come in, we've been able to continue to hire and continue to uh, build faster and uh, keep the app. I mean, the app has like a 4.9 like, like, you know, stars on the app store. Like it's pretty tight at this point. Um, and now it's really kind of like we've been around for so long that like a lot of the stuff we want to build is actually like it, it forcing us to like kind of like rebuild the, the app from the ground up um, and think about our legacy users while we do it. Uh, during that span of time, the New York Times wrote about us, so well, that was awesome. Um, you know, they they kind of like were like, well, Snapchat's like, eh. and then like Facebook's like, eh. and then like, and be like, what's like every day is the most visceral way to keep like reflect on your personal life. I'm like, yeah. Uh, and then that was, uh, and then TechCrunch, who like ignored us all those years because we never raised the time in VC funding, was like, hey, you should use one second every day. I'm like, yeah, all right. Um, so there's a lot of use cases for the app, which I would usually cover at more length, but you know, um, it's boring. Uh, so like parents basically, you know, are, 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 you know, one of their main, main reasons why the app has been, uh, had success for the past couple of years because, uh, this is one of the first one second every day videos, uh, of, of a, of a baby from, uh, uh, from birth. Um, this is now a very common thing for us. Um, but this, this is Indigo, and Indigo is, uh, um, had his uh, fifth uh, birthday this year. Um, so uh, every single day of Indigo's life uh, is captured in a 30 minute video, which is awesome. Um, uh, celebrities are using one second every day. Ah, and that's cool. And celebrities, yay. Um, and uh, many of you may have seen uh, this video, which I won't play, but this has 60 million views just on YouTube. Um, it, like, you know, it's been copied and put on Facebook and all the things in some way, shape, or form. Some, you know, there are, there are all sorts of various estimates on how, uh, uh, how many views this, view, this video actually has, uh, which are like in the hundreds of millions. Um, we've had a lot of partnerships along the way. Uh, one of the reasons we built an Android version was because, like, partnership, like, we were getting these, like, I was getting emails from, like, like Pepsi, and I'm like, hey, and they're like, do you want to, like, partner? And I'm like, sure, but, like, we don't have an Android app. Are you guys going to partner with an app that only has an iOS version? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. So since we launched Android, all of a sudden, like, hey, we can do things. Uh, we did a really cool partnership with Google, which usually I go a little bit more in detail, but uh, it, it, just, it was cool. Um, and then uh, Chase and Rayman, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, we're currently in talks with a couple other people right now who want to do some interesting things. Uh, at the same time, we're trying to really, like, these are really time consuming, especially for a team that's uh, like us that's like still like growing. Um, and so we've learned our lesson that like maybe we need to just hold off on that until we're a little further along, because uh, there's a lot we want to do um, and uh, that we want to be able to focus on that stuff. Um, we won a Webby last year. Um, uh, best use of mobile camera, um, and this is uh, last week, me driving to Jersey, um, there's a, a car with a license plate that says VC money, um, and I'm like, oh, this is dangerous, but I have to. I, just, I just took my phone out of the dock and I took a photo and video. Um, I took a second, obviously, uh, and uh, yeah, I just thought I was like, man, that's really pertinent right now. Um, so. Uh, so the question became, at, like, especially particularly this year, was like, is it time to actually raise VC funding? Um, now I had been in the game for five years. I had learned a lot about the journeys of all their, you know, many other founders, many other companies, many other, uh, you know, I've read a lot. And, I, you know, the more and more uh, I thought about VC funding, it really kind of came down to uh, two questions. Um, but, like, what if I don't want to sell my company and what if I don't want to IPO? And that's kind of what it, like, came down to me at the end of the day, which is, like, when somebody gives you money, they want their money back eventually, and they want it in large lump sums, and that usually means getting acquired by a company um, or putting it in the stock market eventually, you know, for, for to sell the shares so that somebody can be like, no, I can sell my share, my Facebook shares for X amount of money. Um, so 
I'm still struggling with this question. Uh, I went on this uh, Gimlet Media show called The Pitch, where I, and it, uh, by the way, uh, I, I saw there were two Shark Tank people here. I don't usually ever mention this to, uh, to anyone other than like maybe five people in my life, but I was on Shark Tank as well, um, except it didn't air because there was no drama because everybody liked it, but everybody hated my valuation and they were just like, we're not gonna give you that. Well, we love it, but like, we're not gonna give you that much. And I was like, I'm not gonna give you that much of my company for like $300,000. And then I walked out and I never aired. Anyways. <laughs> Um, I was on, the, uh, on a, uh, an, like an NPR version of that called The Pitch, where I was pitching to some uh, investors. Um, and actually, I'll, there's a slide about that later, so I'll just get to that in a bit. But um, I talked to a lot of VCs. Uh, the, uh, they basically spent the first two months of this year like talking to VCs, like some notable ones who hit some of them who hit me up. And I'm like, hey, now you're hitting me up. Sweet. Um, and the meetings went super well. And like there were a couple of notable investors that I've been reading everything they've been writing for years. And I thought, man, like if I could get money from those guys, like, then I think it makes sense just because I trust what they would want to do with the app. Um, and I sat down with these guys and they're like, man, like, I know I'm BC, but I don't think you should raise money. Like, you're over the hump, you're profitable, you're making money. Like, you're, you're still being able to build without uh, potentially ever doing something to the app that you don't want to do, which you probably will have to do if you do raise VC funding. So the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I realized that like, well, it certainly would be cool to do X and Y and Z, but at the same time, we have enough money right now coming in. Uh, we still make more than we spend and as we've been hiring. And like, what if we can pull it off? What if we don't ever have to, you know, uh, what if I just want to be the CEO of One Second Every Day for like 20 years or something? Um, so, and continue to build stuff without like the pressure of like, we got to make a lot of money. And it's like, what if we just made like a really nice amount of money and made something really good that a lot of people really liked? Uh, anyways, so, um, the team's grown to 12 now, uh, fully distributed. Um, we... Uh, have uh, 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 we have Canadians? We have uh, we, we we have Mexicans. It's great. Um, <laughs> uh, this is me uh, on the pitch, um, and 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 you know one of the things we're working on now, and I'll talk a little bit about what's next for us. But you know we're working on a subscription tier to be able to finally make the app free. Right now we've been playing, we've been doing great as a paid app, but. Uh, we really want to open up the app for the base version that exists right now for anybody to be able to have that experience for free. Um, and so we're building this, we've been building this subscription here which essentially have like a bunch of extra uh, like features that if you want them, great. We're, we're hoping two to three percent of our users convert. Um, and if, we, if they do, then great. Then now we can monetize through the subscriptions and bring way more people through the door to actually just do one second every day uh, the way that it currently exists. Um, and um, we're building a social feed, and they took an opportunity uh, to sensationalize the you know headline a little bit and be like, "This guy's taking on Facebook." It's like, no, but that's cool that you say that like that. Um, and yeah, so I, I just want to end with two little things, which is um, usually this is more along the stuff that I usually talk about, but. Um, I think one of the reasons that I do One Second Every Day that, that I'm really passionate about is that, uh, I, that we tend to undervalue the ordinary like mundane moments of our lives and I promise you that uh, as time moves on, uh, those moments actually become some of your more treasured things in the future and you want to be able to remember them. Uh, you know, they're, my, my niece is graduating uh, high school uh, next week. Oh my God. I'm old. Um, and she, like, I have seven years of her life kind of playing back before me. And some of these moments feel like I'm just sitting there and I just recorded her. And now I look back on those moments, I'm like, oh my God. Um, and there's like all sorts of stuff that happened throughout the past seven and a half years that I probably wouldn't have captured if it wasn't for the fact that I have to record something today. Um, and it feels like nothing, but it ends up being meaning, uh, meaning the world to me later. Um, uh, finally, uh, this is one of my favorite quotes that I love. Uh, isn't it funny how day to day nothing changes, but when you look back, everything is different. Uh, I think like it really embodies uh, what we're trying to do, and uh, with one second every day, and how uh, what you know it's uh, uh, you know uh, when you look back at some of this stuff, it's like like it, it's it really puts life in perspective and into context, and I I, I uh, highly recommend it. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>